from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. our show, say hello to my loyal, my family away from family, my staff or co-host studio audience, and my virtual audience at home. Thank you for waiting for us through the snow. I know. How you doing? I feel relieved. Let's get started, it's time for Hot Topics. my hands for how you doing? Okay, okay. No, because the pockets are so deep. It's so snowy today. I, I wanted to look the part for you. All snowy and stuff. And then Willie put on this belt. But it's okay, it's snowy. So um, I apologize for not being here yesterday and the day before. Believe me, now that you watch my event, you know my drive. And my drive was start up the Zamboni, Bring it to the apartment and let me break ice and snow banks while I get to the studio. And then I was thinking, well, then who would turn on the lights? And, and who would do the cameras? And then most of the people here do take transit. I mean, some people drive, but most people take mass transit and it was a mess. It was a mess the first day and the second day. So I apologize. Look at New York. Wow. And, and that's good New York. That's Times Square. It's still a mess outside. Anyway, um, thank you so much for watching my movie and my documentary on Life Tour. <laughs> Sierra and Malcolm uh, 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 Morocco did such a good job that I want them to go on and do even better. Morocco texts me during it. And um, because I was like, who's texting? A lot of people were texting, but they were waiting until commercial. And so he waited until commercial too. And then even he was like, okay, we're back. <laughs> Click, <laughs> you know, um, but, but a lot of people were texting. Um, nobody called during it, except for um, during commercial breaks, like people who were really close to me, like my friend Lisa Carnegie, she's like, oh, it all makes sense. That's my girlfriend who was doing all the talking. Um, and a few people called. Um, one person had the nerve to call while the movie was actually on. <laughs> His name shan't be spoken. Oh, uh-oh. It was like really nervy, and then he sent flowers the next day. Flowers don't make up for what you did. <laughs> I get one chance to tell my story. I'm looking at it, and I couldn't even eat. All right, all right. <laughs> There were a lot of people who sent flowers and, and, you know, like beautiful, like the real expensive flowers and stuff. And also the ones that last for all year, the ones that you don't have to water and stuff. And people sent food and all kinds of other stuff that makes me happy. But the one thing that I was hooked on in a disgusting way, somebody sent me a big gigantic Lloyd's carrot cake. Now, there's a Lloyd's in Manhattan and a Lloyd's in Brooklyn. All I know is that this person doesn't live in neither one, but knew where to get the carrot cake. And it tasted as good as Melba's, but this one was in my house and it was real deep and the buttery icing. Look, you all, I took a fork out of the drawer and I went right into the middle of it. I, Cause I started to cut it. I said, wait a minute, 
I'm by myself, who's looking? <laughs> the cats are looking, I'm like, mind your own business. Here, take a piece of icing. Um, but, but thank you very much for um, you know, supporting. And if you have any questions throughout the hour or ever regarding the movie, then, or, or the documentary, I thought both were necessary. Uh, the documentary, by the way, was shot. Um, it, was, it started to begin shooting in 2019, just so that you get a perspective on why all the tears while I was sitting on the couch in my apartment on the lymphedema machine, because even I was disgusted with myself. Like, it, like, like, stop crying, stop crying, stop crying. Now, today, when you talk to me about it, which the last part of the documentary was shot in today time, and uh, the, like the movie, the whole bit, the whole process with Lifetime, and I love you dearly, everybody who works there, but your names are too inside. They, people who watch the show only want to hear Morocco and Sierra. So, but it took about two and a half years for that entire project. It was quarantining a village in Canada. I wasn't able to go there. Back and forth arguments. They had to convince me why certain stuff should be left in. And I had to convince them why other stuff should be taken out. And why certain, like we were perfect, produce, we were perfectly producing it together. And I, I just can't be more pleased. I, there's, I, I have no regrets. I have no regrets on the things that I, that I uh, shared with you. And there was nothing in there that was a lie and there was nothing in there that was embellished. Uh, so if you have any questions for, actually, um, oh wait, we have a virtual audience question. I'm being reminded. Um, all right, where's Chira? Chira is in my virtual audience, there she is today. And Chira says, have you ever run into the girls from Total after they tried to jump you? Yes. First of all, that whole jumpation, if you've listened to me on the radio, I talked about that the next day and maybe the day after. You know, along with being asked to be Salt and Peppa's DJ, that's one of my highlights of my career as well. You know, nobody ever tried it like that. They tried it. But you know what's interesting about Keisha, Kim, and Pam, and me is that. I believe it's Kima who's married to the comedian J.B. Smoove, who's been on our show several times and brought his wife Kima with him, who when we had a full audience, was able to sit in the audience. J.B. and I addressed it. I don't know whether it was in front of you all. It might have been behind the scenes, but just like grown people. She gave me the high and the smile and stuff. And then um, I've seen all three of them um, as regular audience members, you know, you get tickets online, you come to the Wendy show, you get in contact with her audience department. And during commercials, you know, I, I always like to walk around and flirt in the audience and stuff. And I saw them and I was like, wow, you know, like hearts, you know, you know like no, like we're grown now. So have I seen them? Yes, I have seen them. And when we figure out uh, COVID-19 and then they can go back on tour, they can certainly come here. All three of them are just one. Yes, certainly. I'm grown. <laughs> I dug into that cake though, I'm telling you. But in a weird way, and that was the only thing that I was eating, and along with drinking a lot of water, I think I lost three pounds. You know, because remember, I have to go down the steps, so I have to get up the energy, go down the steps, the snow is falling, it looked really beautiful. Yeah. Shout out to all of the city workers. My, my mail was delivered, the garbage is picked up. Um, there were six shootings though, during the snowstorm uh, here in the city. There was one in Newark and the, the city workers in Newark were cleaning up and found a body, like, oh, oh I see a hand. <laughs> Under the snow. What? Oh. 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 Terrible. I was watching a lot of TV, but not really watching a lot of TV. You know what I mean? So this Mariah Carey, Mariah, by the way, you were fabulous in the, um, in the documentary. <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> oh, Mariah. Mariah's being sued by her sister, Allison. Mariah's got a new memoir, and in the memoir, um, Allison is alleging that Mariah drugged her. 
Uh, no, Mariah is alleging yeah. that Allison says, and we've done this story before, and we've talked about Mariah a lot back in the radio days. See, a lot of people looked at the documentary and the movie and said, I've heard all of these stories. Where have you people been? It's just that it was enjoyable to see them get acted out and talked about. But I've heard all of these stories. Yeah, you've heard all the stories. Anyway, um, Mariah was claiming, in her, or is claiming in her new book, in her new book, that um, Allison claims that Mariah allegedly drugged her. Now, the girls are eight years apart. Mariah was 12 and Allison was 20. Allison, or Mariah wrote in the book that Allison drugged her. That Allison drugged Mariah? Correct. When Mariah was 12 years old, she gave her a Valium, oh. allegedly, according to Mariah's book. Well, isn't that the calm down? <laughs> yeah, she knocked her out. She was 12. Oh, man. Allegedly. Allison allegedly gave Mariah third degree burns with hot tea. Oh. And Allison allegedly tried to sell Mariah out to a pimp. I know. That's, that's crazy. Allison also um, is claiming that all of Mariah's allegations are fal false. And Allison is now suing Mariah for $1.25 million. I don't know where Allison is getting that figure. Like, why wouldn't you go for an even $100 million? Oh, right. <laughs> or, or something like that. Um, here's the deal. The girls are eight years apart. By the way, I can believe all of the above allegations. I'm supposed to say alleged, but you know. Um, Allison wants to be heard. Allison said that with Mariah's book, not, <coughs> book not now out, <coughs> that she has turned back to prostituting and, and drinking. Drinking and the things that make that take her mind off of February. Second, what's today, the third? Third. The third? Uh-huh. Okay. T t yeah, this is real time that we're talking. Um, Allison is saying that, you know, sh these things have turned, and I can believe it because, you know, when you have, Mariah was a brilliant singer being cultivated by her mother at an early age, if you know something about the Mariah story. And Mariah's mother was taking her in and out of the city. Sometimes Mariah would have to go into car service by herself, but other times, this mother, was very into Mariah. And Mariah had a brother who launched a lawsuit, can't stand her, don't know any more about it um, as of right now. But her siblings have turned against her. Mariah went on and grabbed the brass ring of life. The mother probably still pays more attention to Mariah. And even back then, Mariah got the prettiest clothes. Mariah got you know the best food. Mariah drank the tea while it's hot. You want some hot tea, B? Boom, you can see it happening. If I were Allison, I'd do the same thing. You know why? It's gotta be tough. The way parents, you know, as a parent, first of all, if, if showbiz is what you want for your kid, then you've gotta expect that this kid is gonna have some backlash from their siblings. And you as parents, it is your job not to get them to the audition on time, but to get them to the audition on time and make sure that these other two kids feel special and loved in whatever way you can create. Okay. <clears throat> With that in mind, uh, by the way, I did watch the movie by myself. I like to watch my own work by myself, you know? I, I don't like to be interrupted at all. And I never cried. As a matter of fact, I found myself doing a lot of laughing, like, I can't believe I said that. I can't believe this just happened. I can't believe that. And I was talking to my coworkers around here, you know, Suzanne, you were in the documentary, mm -hmm. and thank you very much for that. I knew Suzanne was gonna be in the documentary, and and I'd seen the documentary prior, but you all didn't know half of what was going on around here. All you knew is that Kevin and I were here mm -hmm. and that was that. Mm -hmm. You had no idea mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you couldn't use the telephones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and stuff. Mm -hmm. And what was going through my mind on Halloween day, which is, mm -mm. This better be good for ratings. Mm -mm. I acted like, oh, damsel in distress, and I used that um, um, in, in the doc, but, or the movie, whatever. But in my mind, I'm thinking, he doesn't even know what is about to hit him in his knees real good. Mm -hmm. He's the one who should have wished that I cracked my skull and you know, had to be locked up in some, some sort of um, 
Anywho, mm. poor John Anderson. John's around crying. The Anderson brothers I, uh, and the Anderson family. I couldn't tell anybody because I knew what I was going to do. And I knew that if you all stuck with me, that it'd be a better day here, you know? Anyway, look, there's this country singer named Morgan Wellen. Did, did you, have you heard about this? Mm. Cute, right? Well, he, he's ruined it for himself for a moment. I think the country community will forgive him, unfortunately. He's been caught using the N-word. Yes, out, out loud. He just had a baby six months ago. No, 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 hold on. So he lives in this community, and on Sunday, as in a couple of days ago, um, he was at home, there were a lot of parties, a lot of commotion going on at his house, but I guess they're used to it because he's number one on the country billboard charts. Like, radio stations in the country community, the Hot Topics Bureau gave them, you know, various ones that are really popular call. They said, yeah, we play him like every half hour. We're not playing him anymore. You know, they gave us the inside track on what they're doing about him using the N-word. So the neighbors heard commotion. They came outside. One neighbor started filming and TMZ got the foot footage. Um, um, take a look. He said the P word, S word. I saw um, Bevy Smith on a repeat of Dr. Oz and Bevy said, and I thought this was so great, America's got to acknowledge the stain. This country's got a stain and the stain is racism. A stain is not something that ruins an outfit. A stain is something that can be acknowledged and cured. Sometimes a stain doesn't go all the way away, but at least it fades with acknowledgement. You know what I mean? And if I were the neighbor, I would have definitely been out there recording him because I know that I've got a young hothead living, he's 20, 27. 27, a young hothead living across the street from me and that Charles and Harvey are waiting at the TMZ bureau for some good old footage. So um, neighbor, very good job. If I were you, I would have done the same thing. And look, I'm me talking. I, I am me talking. If I were my neighbors, I'd be looking outside, I'd be waiting outside my, my apartment at this point. <laughs> Like, what's she doing? But that's what neighbors do. And then the neighbor got up early the next morning and recorded him leaving with this woman. Oh. Just to show all of us that, yep, that's him. And there's the woman. No word on whether that's the baby's mother. Probably not. The baby is only three, three months old? Six months. Six months old. Same difference. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. Look at that grass. <laughs> This man, this man, hopefully he's, he's taking he and, his, and his, um, his blonde sensation right here and they're going to a hotel. I would move, if I were him, I would move out of that neighborhood and I would move into an apartment building or something like that with one entrance and one exit where if neighbors are gonna film you, then they have to film through a peephole. Thank you, TMZ. Many people seem to think I'm still in love. Are you out of your mind? And many people seem to think I want it back. That life with that man. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> when I was watching my mess on TV, I was like, I can't believe I'm one of the most eligible, eligible bachelorettes in the world. Yeah. With all my stuff out there for good or for bad. And I am laying up here with these two, who, by the way, they love the throne. So they're on, remember I showed the, anyway, I might have found him, him. Now remember, I'm dating for the purpose of eventually calling him my boyfriend, and then if he'd like to get married, all right, but it'll be a different kind of marriage. If you could understand what I'm saying, when I say love of my life in terms of my ex-husband, that means I will never love like that again. Like, uh, you know what I mean? The, the new love is a whole different type of love. Doesn't discount it. And I think I found him. Just quiet down and take a look. Hello, Wendy. This is Julian from Kansas City. I'm 40 years old. I'm an international jazz artist. 
and um, six foot seven. Now, what you gonna do with all that? Listen, I'm an all around good guy, but I can talk until you're blue in the face. It's not about me, it's about you. And I'm about that action. So uh, no need for you to continue to look left. No need for you to continue to look right when it's right in your face. So having said all of that, I do have one last thing to ask you. How you doing? No, he took all of these for me. He's not a model, he just, but he plays one behind his bass. He plays bass and he's had two what, is, what about his music for 2020? Uh, uh, the, two hits, two hits. In two hits on the jazz charts yep. in, in 2020. Yep. In other oh. words, mm -hmm. wait. Too hot. Handsome. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he could literally, be, he could be five feet 10 and he'd still pass. But the <laughs> idea that I get all those extra inches. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yes. and you know, with the COVID vaccine, what is happening is, is that if you can prove that you're uh, like some sort of national treasure and you travel and you do things, then you can get, like I can see him in New York a lot uh -huh. at the Count Basie thing, uh, at all the- The Blue the, Note. Uh -huh. The Blue Note. Right. Yes. My house. Yes. Uh -huh. His hotel. Yes. Dinner. Mm -hmm. Kansas City, he eats the good food. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, Ju Now, what, what's our name? Jendi? Uh -huh. <laughs> Jundi? Yeah. Jundi? Give him a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Jundi. Judy. 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 Judy or Jendi? Jendi. 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 Okay. Mm. All right. <laughs> if you or someone you know is still interested in me, uh, look, if you want to back out because of uh, Saturday and the repeats on Sunday, well, go to wendyshow.com for the details, okay? And I remember, I'm, I'm serious about this. Like, don't, don't play with me, because I'm not playing with you. Oh, we have another question from the virtual audience. It's Isabella, and she's asking about my event. Is, how, how you doing, Isabella? <laughs> Isabella um, asks, did you plan to spray paint the garage before you got there or did you just happen to have it in the car? Okay, this does involve some explaining. Uh, first of all, I didn't know about the house until uh, TMZ showed it and they got that pic those, those pictures because you all, um, re regular people who just happened to watch our show wanted to put me onto the T. See, I was locked away when all that stuff, when, when I realized a lot that was going down. So by the time I got out, what I did was, I called one of his friends and I talked at him real greasy. I mean, I, I tipped him and it, you know hugged him afterwards like, I'm sorry, but you have no idea what you just helped me with and I appreciate it. And he didn't understand until he watched over the weekend. And one of the people who, who text, damn. Well, I'm glad I could be of service. <laughs> uh, look, look, look. So, so he drove me over to the house, but first, before I left the show, um, I went down to Michael Lee's Michael Lee, I went down to your department where you have all your arts and crafts and I wanted to grab a color that I know that my ex-husband would know it was me. And I pictured it to be like chartreuse or, or pink or you know, something like that. And I grabbed that and then I stopped at the fish store and I grabbed a long one including the tail and the head and everything. And what you didn't see in the movie because every minute counts when you're doing a production including that they're about to wrap me up from talking to you right now but let me just talk fast. So I took the stuff from Michael Lee, right? And then I went home and I put on some, um, and then I said, wait, I'm not gonna change. I'm gonna wear the same clothes I wear all the time. You know, and I'm gonna wear my same hair and everything. And I called up his boy, I said, get to my house right now. And I knew I was safe because I knew that they were away on vacation. Okay, they, oh yes, the PI already told me that they were away on vacation. Oh yes, I'm that girl. 
I knew. So, um, so I said, get over my house, borrow a car from somebody that you know that my ex does, that does, would never recognize the car just in case he has outside cameras because we always had outside cameras outside of our house nine miles away. So, so, and I said, bring a baseball hat and wear a hoodie and don't have it say anything and don't be recognizable. He wears a recognizable hat, but smart girl, I had, you know, a different hat. It happened to be a Wendy hat. I said, oh wait, no, I have another one. <laughs> so we go over there in a stranger car. I tell him to wait at the top of the driveway. I go down the driveway and I start, first of all, there was no pool at the house. That was lifetime being extra. <laughs> the, there was no pool at that house, except maybe a pool of tears when they came in. He realized, oh. first, th look, Two dumbbells going on vacation, a three-car garage. They left one of the garage doors open. That's what they left out on Lifetime. I went into, first of all, I see one of our fancy Ferraris off the dock, custom built in Italy, right? Sitting here all plugged up, ready, I guess, to go for a romantic ride with the baby seat in the back or something. I don't know. I, look, look. All I know is the garage door is open. I knew that they were away. I said, let me go in. I knew I wasn't gonna go into the house because I didn't wanna break and enter, even though I am Mrs. Hunter and you know, although the company that he put the house in was not a company I was familiar with. So, cause I did my diligence prior to going over there. Remember the conference room full of people after I ran through the traffic to try to get to my meeting. So, <clears throat> I went in there and I opened up the doors to the Ferrari and started eating. Oops, I'm spilling fish and onions oh. and olives and pickles. Oh. Oof, <laughs> oof, and it's warm in here. Let me turn on the car and make it warmer. Ooh, oh. I love the smell of old fish. Oh. <laughs> then closed the door. Maybe I left it open to dead the battery, I forgot. Oh. Then inside the garage, you know, the way you get to know somebody is you dump their garbage over. Dump the garbage over. I'm seeing pregnancy tests. Oh my goodness. Uh -uh. Yes, I, yes, I'm seeing pregnancy tests. I'm seeing fine dining. Like, you know, since when does, okay, uh huh, the Pellegrino water. It's, you know, like the finest dining. The boxes, you know, after you take out your, your finery that you might order from someplace, you get rid of the boxes if you have enough boxes, take them. It's like they never put any garbage out. The boxes were like stacked up all around the garage. Only one car could fit in there and that was the blue one. Everything else, the other two ports in the garage were full of stuff even before I got there. Um, there were um, um, magazines and newspapers and, oh, dog gates and dog food. Oh, it was a real household with a little tiny dog. Like, I don't know what kind of dog it was, but you know, one of those real cute ones where she probably begged him and he said, oh, okay, yo. And they went and they got one of those, you know, cause only special for him, you know, he'd never go to a kennel to get a dog. Oh God, you know, paid a few thousand dollars, got her a little lappy dog, probably bought her a Gucci bag to put it in. And she's driving my rolls or whatever, Bentleys and stuff and Porsche. You know, going to work out, the little lappy dog. Yes, honey. And so the reason that I spray painted Wendy and Kevin forever outside, follow what I'm saying. The neighborhood wasn't a bad neighborhood, you know, not a bad neighborhood at all. Um, and I didn't want to spray paint something greasy and hard the way I could have in black paint and kick in the garage. So what I did, I did them a favor. I put the garage door down. You know what I'm saying? I, pushed, I put the garage door down and I spray painted that because that would be something that kind neighbors would let you have up for at least five days mm -hmm. before they would come over to your house and ever so gently knock and ask you to take it down because they would think that you were a great family. Wow, they got married. Mm -hmm. They probably thought the backwoods Barbie was me. They, you know, that, that maybe, you know, my ex was a threatening, menacing man. He, you know, and wow, they got married. Let's let the lovebirds love. And that's why I did that. And I just wanted to be just an inconvenience in an already plot that I had. To, and the reason why I um, spray painted and glued the, um, the mailbox is because some people just have mailbox that, mailboxes that you can just kick over. But if you look up, Real estate, mailboxes are a fortune to misplace or to replace. They are a fortune and they lived on a busy street. So now they got a block off part of the street and then you got to dig deep down in the ground and wait for the cement to dry and then 